All right, praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity, the privilege, the honor of being here to deliver your word today. Uh, Lord, um, definitely, this has got to be you. So I ask you to just, I just surrender myself to you, Lord. I ask you to make these words come to life in our hearts and minds, that you bless us with uh, encouragement and with uh, to get to know you better, all of that. We, I just give this time to you. Help us receive it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. Our spiritual meal of the day. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to click here. All right, technical difficulties. There we go. All right, praise the Lord. Uh, last week, Pastor Tyrone shared a message uh, was titled God's Timing, about how God has a time for everything, and so uh, and that we need to understand that and ask God to help us be, have, be patient, like we heard in testimonies today, and trust that in all those seasons, it's all working for everyone's good. He's got a plan, and when we flow with it, uh, we'll be blessed. Praise the Lord. And with that timing, he had a lot of uh, comments about the end times. And I believe God wants us to spend a little more time on that today. And so without further ado, let's get into our opening verses. Matthew chapter 24, verses 10 through 13. And it says, and then many will be offended, will betray one another, will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a whole lot in these few verses right here. Before we even get to the title, we can see what it's like even now in the world today. How offenses are rising up, betrayals, not... There, there's just all kinds of strife and problems that are going on. False prophets who are just giving people what their itching ears want to hear and cause them to be drawn away. There's deception on a false gospel. And the love of many will grow cold. That love, brothers and sisters, I looked it up because I remember seeing it before. That word is not phileo or eros or whatever, the kind of love that's in this world. This is the agape love of God, of many will grow cold in the last days. That is a scary proposition because the agape only comes from God. And that's that unconditional love that God gives us, praise the Lord. And so, but he or she who endures to the end shall be saved. And today, that's our focus right there, enduring to the end waiting on the lord amen? amen all right lord just give me the strength get me through it all all right what is the end what does it mean enduring to the end what does that look like for a, a disciple of christ what is our end the end is a place of rest when we think about the traditional okay we die we go to heaven and it's paradise there's flowers and streams and no struggles we're at full rest we're at peace and that's what we're all looking for in our our lives but what if god has a place of rest like that for us today while we're here that i believe brothers and sisters is where god wants to bring us a promised land of rest in him in the midst of all the chaos that goes on around us amen mm -hmm. hebrews chapter 3 verses 14 through 19 says for we have become partakers of christ if we hold to the beginning, our confidence steadfast to the end. Notice that in the midst of Hebrews, it's also talking about enduring to the end, holding the beginning of our confidence when we knew that God was real, that Christ had saved us, and having confidence that he is able to keep us having it, holding on to that confidence to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now, those were physical 
people who left Egypt and they were heading to the promised land, which we'll talk more about, but they were an example for us and they saw the miracles and the signs of God that delivered them out of Egypt. But instead of trusting him, they trusted in Egypt, they trusted in themselves and they actually rebelled against what God was doing. The truth is God was going to bring them all the way and all they had to do was believe it and walk with him. Amen. Amen. Now, with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear they would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Amen. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, it uh, the author continues, verses 1 through 10. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, there it is, the promised land, the end of our journey is his rest. Let us fear, lest any of you seem to become short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with the faith in those who heard it. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. As he sa has said, so I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although their wor the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. How does this apply to us today? Because today, not only God did, did God take us out of Egypt, the world, and he brought us into this journey, but he also is bringing us to a place where we stop trying to control things. We stop trying to be good, do good. All those things are uh, unbelief that we think that we have something to do with all this stuff. When God says, I took you out of Egypt and I will bring you into this place of rest. So he rested from his work. He's going to cause us to rest from our own works as well. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest, since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those who to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, today, after such a long time as it has been said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Because when we try to take control, when we go against God's will, our heart gets hard, because that's where he speaks from. And we want to do our thing and we fight it. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterwards spoken of another day. Therefore, there remains a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also seeks from his works as God did from his. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So the end of this journey that we're talking about, that God wants us to endure to the end, is to come into his rest. Praise the Lord. The end includes not only rest from our own works, but rest from our enemies. Today, we talked about trials. We also go through warfare. There's a battle in the mind, and the enemy continues to try to get us off course and try to get us from walking in love. There's this battle that rages in our head, two voices, and that is something God wants to give us rest from. And an example of that is in the book of Esther in chapter 9, verses 18 through 22. Now, if you know the story, we know that the, um, the Haman had, had, every, had it all planned for the Jews to be annihilated. They were going to attack them and kill them and wipe them out. And of course, you can imagine that they were in panic and they were praying and they were worried because the enemy was going to come and destroy them. But at the end of everything, the end of this work, at the end of the journey, when it was all over, we see the Jews who were at Shushan assembled, assembled together because what had happened is that uh, Esther appealed to the king and, and, and the king found out the truth. He hanged Haman and then he had Mordecai. He gave him his signet ring, his authority, and then he posted out there that the, instead of getting killed, the Jews had the right to attack the people who were attacking them and then God was with them and they had victory. And now we see here after that, at all the warfare, off all the trials and the fires and everything they went through in this end of the journey, 
the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day as well as on the 14th. And on the 15th of the month, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled town celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. And Mordecai, who wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far, who were in all the province of King Ahasuerus, to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly for the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar, as days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies, as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them and from mourning to a holiday, that they should make them a days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. Amen? Amen. Now, this was a physical thing, but for us, it's a spiritual thing. All the wars that we're going through are God allowing us to, to go through, to learn, as Sister Isabella said, to trust in him in all things. That's what this is. And when we come to that place of total trust in the Lord, we not only rest from our own works, but we the, we are sealed and the, the enemy has no more power over us, can try to say all at once, but we have perfect rest because we have perfect trust in God himself. Amen? That's part of the end of the journey. The end. Praise the Lord. The end is also safety. And I just talked about a seal. In Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, we see, after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. Amen? And so when God has finished this work in his end times church, for those who have, who have trusted him, who had followed him, who he has chosen to do this work, the real chaos doesn't happen until, just like we see the disciples, they weren't ready to handle anything until they were given that seal in the upper room. And after that, no matter what happened to them, they were able to stand just like in Psalm 91. He who puts their trust in the Lord most high uh, under the shadow of his wings, all this stuff will happen around them, but nothing will happen to them. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. The end is like Eden, like the Garden of Eden. Praise the Lord. Why do I say that? Because the word tells us that. In Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 3, God says, Listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. That rock is Jesus Christ, and we were in the pit de destined for destruction. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord will comfort Zion, and that's each and every one of us. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Amen? Amen. We talk about all the, in the testimonies today, I'm just so encouraged because everyone understands we're going through this struggle. We've all got these giants in our promised land, these mountains that we can't climb over on our own strength. Everything that's happening can bring us down, but we have Hope in the Lord, and this is his promise for those who endure to the end, joy and gladness, thanksgiving and melody in our hearts. Amen? Amen. That is the end that we need to endure to. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. The end is knowing him who was from the beginning. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 2, verse 13 says, I write to you fathers or mothers, spiritual fathers and mothers, not not." in age, in years, because you have known him who is from the beginning. You see, we start out as the children at the end of this verse. I write to you little children because you've known the father. We experience that God is real. And the fact is that he redeemed us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we have that understanding. 
then we become young men and women spiritually because we overcome the wicked one. We are able to use the word of God to defeat the works of darkness as they attack us. But still there's a battle. But when we come to spiritual fatherhood, spiritual motherhood, it is when we come to know him, and you heard me say it over and over again, it's an intimate knowing like a, a marriage, like there, the, know him who was from the beginning and who is that? That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So in the end, we will know him as he is known as he knows us. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12 says, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. There it is. We're not talking about some place after we're just buried under the ground here. We're talking about, and, and those who wait for him, and we're going to hear it in the word today. This is his promise to those who believe. All we got to do is ask for the faith. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And this is what he will do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The end is the salvation of our souls. Now, wait, aren't we already saved? There is a distinction here on can you experience that salvation here instead of waiting until you leave here and go into the heavenly realms and the spirit. Guess what? The end uh, can be salvation of our souls while we're here, just like the disciples who became the apostles who chain God used to change the world, is that they reached that point where they had halos glowing, God's presence in them, unfettered relationship with God, no breaking in it, no going in and out, in with him at all times. And just like Jesus spoke, what I hear from my father, those words I speak is exactly what he will do for those who reach the end. He will speak through us and use us to change the world for the last time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28 says, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. There's that salvation that the common salvation we think of, okay? We're, we've got the seal, we've got the blood, so the angel of death has no power over us. But to those who eagerly wait for him, again, waiting for him, the end of this journey, he will appear a second time apart from sin because he will have done, dealt with the sin in us. He will have dealt with our flesh and he will cause us to walk in his commandments and a, a, apart from sin for salvation. It doesn't say after we leave, we go to him. He was coming uh, and appearing to us just as he did the disciples of those days. Amen? Amen. Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Who are these people? Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witnesses to witness to Jesus and for the word of God. Brothers and sisters, this does not mean we have to be like John the Baptist and have our head cut off. What it means is Jesus said foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head because as long as our head is the one in control, he is not. But ultimately, for those who are willing to lay their life down for another, to give their life up for the gospel, he becomes the head. We lose our head and we now, he thinks and he moves and we are blessed and the people around us are blessed as well. Those who have finished the end of the journey, who have come to the cross as he did, those are the ones that we're talking about right here, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now, wouldn't that be a blessing? Amen. Yeah. To be that that is that is something that's that's attainable for human beings on this earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Praise the Lord. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. There it is twice. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's the blessing. Praise the Lord. He who loves his life will lose it. He who is willing to lose his life will have eternal life with him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Getting there. How do we get to the end? What does that look like? Your testimony's already talked about it. So we're just going to cover it. 
The fact is, we got some flaming swords we got to go past. That's just the way it is. There's no other way around it. He comes in some other way. They're thieves and robbers. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 23 through 24, we know that the, the promised land is like the Garden of Eden. Look what happened here. The Lord God said, behold, this, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword, which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Amen. Yeah. To come to Christ, the tree of life, the grace of God, all the blessings to get in the garden of Eden. The end of this journey, we have to go past a flaming sword. That is the way of God. He's redeeming us. He's cleansing us. He's transforming us. Praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 14, verses 21 through 22, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, saying we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. It is the fact, our journey that everyone's been giving testimony about, it's through tribulation, it's through trial, it's through fire, and that fire is that flaming sword. We want to get in that Garden of Eden, that place of rest and peace, and all the joy that comes with it. Praise the Lord. In James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, it says, my brethren, count it all. And of course, Pastor Nike actually, I think, was this the verse? This is the one. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. This is how we learn to wait on the Lord. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Amen? Amen. This is how we get there is God has to do this in us. We will not. So do not think it's strange with this fiery trial. It's God's good work. Praise the Lord. All right, Jay, and he goes on a little further in the same chapter in verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation or trials. It's not just about, you know, just, uh, you know, the devil saying, uh, go fornicate. Temptation to quit. There is temptation. When we go through the fire, there's a temptation to say, you know what, it's too hard. But blessed is the man or woman who endures temptation, for when he or she has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. We just talked about how the disciples became apostles, and they had that glowing halo about them. That's the crown of life. Oneness with God without anything in the way. No flesh anymore. Praise the Lord. This is our promised land. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, uh, lots of word confirming this is just a part of the journey as he brings us to himself. John 16, verse 33, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. That's Jesus speaking to us. He's reminding us it's part of the journey. It's okay. But I'm here and I'm with you and I'm going to bring you all the way. Just believe. And if you have problems, Ask me and I'll give it to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what do we do while we're going through all this stuff that we're experiencing? Jesus, God is telling us, look, I've got you. I'm doing this, but I also have you something for you to do. Fulfill the ministry I've given to you. That's part of staying the course. And I can tell you personally that there are times that it feels like you know, and you, the, the enemy will say quit or uh, that you're just wasting your time. But God is telling us today, fulfill your ministry. 
Hebrews chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you've shown towards his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance and hope until the end, there it is again, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So we got, we, God wants us to stay the course. Galatians 6, verse 9, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18 says, whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit. So he who waits on his master will be honored. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine, you know, you've done all this serving, all this work, and then you quit. And then the promise comes. Well, I, I would not want to be uh, in that position. Not at all. To see those who did stay the course receive the blessing and not be there that would be worse than tragic but thank god all he wants us to, to do is ask him to keep us and he'll do it it's not our strength it's his we just have to tr ask him ask him for everything praise the lord wait for him that's what it said in that last verse right so he who waits on his master will be honored if we believe what we're hearing today, if we believe that he who began a good work in us will complete it, then we will wait for him. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, we're always about the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It's not going to get a void or anything else. It's coming. And God wants us to wait for it. Praise the Lord. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 25 and 26. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And that's what we're talking about here. Amen. In Psalm 37, verses 3 through 11. Trust in the Lord and do good. Fulfill that ministry. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And we know our desire is him. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Amen. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Praise the Lord. For yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more, including our own flesh that gets in the way of walking with God. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wait on the Lord. James chapter 5 verses 7 8. Therefore be patient brethren until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. There it is, the big promise. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. It may not be like everybody says it's going to be. It may be something personal. So just wait for the Lord. He revealed himself to 500 people before he was taken up. He's coming back, and he's going to reveal himself to those who wait on him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 27, verses 13 and 14. I would have lost heart unless that I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? Amen. Can anyone relate to this? Amen. Praise the Lord. What do they say? Can I get a witness? <laughs> wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say. On the Lord. Amen. 
He wants to bless everyone, each and every one of us. He has promises for us. We have to go through the washing machine of life here for him to finish changing us into his image. We just have to believe. Amen. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4 says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor proceed by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. Amen? Even in our day-to-day -day strife and struggle, we can either choose to fight our battle or we can give it to him and watch him fight our battle. Amen? Amen. And when he does it, it's effective. When we do it, it just makes a mess. Amen? Praise the Lord. Can we do it? Can we endure to the end? Can we believe? Philippians 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Okay. It is not going to be us. It's going to be him who does it. And of course, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 and 24, if we believe this, it will happen. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you, Lord. Let's wrap it up with some scripture. First Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. We almost have this every sermon. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. We all been talking about our struggles. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, because he went through more struggle than all of us. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Yeah to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, the end of the journey. And in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, your encounter with him. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving at the end of your faith the salvation of your souls. Amen. And finally, in first uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, this describes what happened with those disciples was they, they, were, they endured to the end. They made it to the end, and look what happened. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. Do not leave the place I have planted you. Do not give up. Don't go somewhere else. I have you here for a purpose. Don't quit. Stay where I have you, but wait for the promise of the Father, in which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Amen? Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you that that word was for us. That's our word to wait, to stay. Stay the course because you're coming. We are going to experience something that this world has not seen for 2,000 years. And that's what you have in store for those who have given their lives to you completely, that you chose, Lord. And so we thank you for this word today, and we recognize that there is no way we can get there to the end unless you do it. Search our hearts, Lord, and reveal to us, reveal to us, where we are still trying to be in control of our lives, where we're starting to, trying to fix things, where we're still have our own desires that are not part of your plan and get it out of us, convict us and help us come to rest in you 
So we don't try to run, but just embrace following you all the way to the cross, Lord, because the blessing is way more than we can ever understand. And we know you called us for this, and we put our trust in you to, to finish it, Lord. We thank you and praise you for this word and for making this happen in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For everyone here, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.